herding cats is a uh, a concept that I first heard, oh, maybe a dozen years ago. Uh, I actually guess it's more than that. When I was involved with the Ron Paul 2008 campaign, and the idea is that, that libertarian types are very uh, independent-minded. It's kind of a, a big part of being a libertarian, is thinking for yourself and and trying to make things better and coming up with new ideas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that makes it very difficult for libertarians to get together, do things together, and be herded, uh, as the, the saying goes. And it is really a, a challenge. And, and the reason I'm saying this, and the reason I'm talking about it today, is that I recently formed a, a small group. Uh, I looked at people who were not only bright and uh, consistent libertarians, uh, intellectuals, but who also had some business savvy. And, and there aren't very many. You know, if you, you, you probably wouldn't even need a full hand to count uh, that, the person that meets that demographic. Like somebody who's really squared away, you could drop them in the middle of nowhere and they would end up starting a business and making money within a year no matter what. And they're also very consistent and... Uh, intellectual and, and all that kind of good stuff. So I, I got this, you know, hard to find list of people together and said, hey, what do y'all think about us trying to kind of lead a marketing or propaganda uh, movement so that various libertarians are putting forth the same message? And this came about because I'm currently reading the Bernays Reader and it's a most of it I've I've read before in various books and, and articles that uh, uh, Ed Bernays had written. But it's a it's a good reminder, and there's some new stuff too. Maybe I read it before and just don't remember it, but it's it's good. And it it's kind of this idea that if if you put forward the same message over and over, what was it the one propagandist said? If you repeat the same lie frequently enough, people will believe it. Well, the same thing goes with truth. If all people are hearing is revisionist history and a collectivist viewpoint, then that's what they're going to believe. And if they are offered other perspectives, then perhaps they will believe those. A challenge within libertarianism, consistent libertarianism, is that, I don't know, it's, I don't want to be mean, but it's, uh, it's not a consistent message. And everyone fall, most people find fault with other people's message and try to change it. Well, no, it's not really that, it's this. And so we, the people who have our particular worldview, perspective, whatever we want to call it, we've just kind of been, I don't know if we're going to make a, an analogy to fighting, we've been jabbing. And that's not necessarily the way to get a knockout. It's not even really the way to end a fight. If you've only got 12 rounds or or 12 millennia to get something done. I, I don't know. I, as you can tell, I'm just kind of pondering out loud. Uh, th this idea of, of getting libertarianism to spread among the masses, I think, will require some sophistication and some centralized leadership for those who want to be involved in a movement. Um, I, I, you know, The problem with centralization uh, in other arenas is just that it's it's not consensual, um, so I, we won't go into that right now. But uh, I just wanted to kind of defend it's okay to centrally plan things as long as everyone involved consents to such. And so that's what I was trying to do: is get this group together of people who are going to centrally plan consistent messaging, uh, marketing for libertarian ideas. And just through this group, I think I've grown to respect. The people in it, and we just barely started, we haven't done much, but I've I've learned to respect, respect the intellect of each member even more than I did before, and also to kind of give up on the idea of such a thing being possible. Um, we can't even, all we want to do is have discussions. We want to debate and clarify and make things better, and that is what the intellectual does, that's what the scholar does the philosopher, and the marketing department, methinks, needs to have a good philosopher who says, hey, y'all, march forward with this message. And the 38 different marketers don't need to each say, well, I think it would be better if we did this. Well, I'm going to do it this. Well, now you've lost, if everybody's doing different things, 
you've lost the power that that central messaging could have. And I'm really thinking that short of someone forming an actual small niche marketing agency, public relations firm, paying for it themselves or maybe getting donations, um, I don't really know that a big volunteer core of libertarian content producers and philosophers can really ever come together and do that consistent message because every single one of them is going to think, well, yeah, the other guy's really good, but I don't really buy this one thing they said. And I think they have it right here, but wrong there. And I've added this idea and yeah, I'm not going to repeat what they say. I think it'd be better if we did blah, blah, blah. And thus <laughs> the, uh, the idea of a powerful central message is doomed to fail. So then your argument is, well, yeah, but that's good and that's okay. And would you would you really change that? Would you want smart people to say, um, you know, we should focus this year on taxation as theft and we should really get that message out. That'll bring us success. And then somebody else says, no, we should use the slogan consent is king and get that out. And then somebody else says, well, really, if you say consent is king, you're kind of legitimizing the idea of kings and so we can't use that and then now these the people who had the original idea and came up with the cool alliteration and the slogan that would likely work now they're demoralized and they're like you know what i'm not even going to come to you with my ideas if all you're going to do is tear everything down forget it and then it falls apart so i really don't know that it's going to be possible to to do this to do this mass centralized marketing effort and then so then a thought I had was, well, if you could get one of the huge influencers, let's say Michael Malice and then uh, Patrick Smith, if you could get the two of those philosophers who have similar ideas to both agree about something, then maybe we don't need to even try to get 38 other people to agree because we know they're not going to. So even if everything that Patrick Smith did in 20. 23 and everything Michael Malice did in 2023 was really had that consent is king if they decided that would work. If they went with that, then maybe their reach would be enough to make a, a, a difference. I don't know. But I can share with you that my observation of the last dozen, over a dozen years of being in the libertarian movement, first as an intellectual libertarian uh, that was inconsistent and then becoming an actual, uh, in my opinion, intellectual <laughs> libertarian and becoming consistent in my thinking, uh, my observation has been that one of the big reasons that libertarian is, is de libertarianism is growing. I get it. I know. I wasn't there from the beginning, but just in the last five years or 10 years, I have noticed this huge explosion in, in membership. And by membership, I mean people getting the idea. But it could be so much more. I mean, I really think the ideas are great. They're, you know, if you look at them intellectually, they work. If you look at them from a uh, kind of an aesthetic uh, perspective, they work. Like, it's just, it's it's awesome, man. And I want to share it with everybody. And uh, no, it's, it's, it's not going as well as it could as we do this piecemeal thing. And I really think that it's okay for a bunch of human critters who agree about something, whether it's riding horses in a particular style of teaching horses or a political philosophy or whatever, it's okay for people to get together and say, hey, marketing wise, how about we shave our neck beards off and put on some sports coats and become better at our grammars and uh, learn some slogans and learn some key phrases that we're going to use over and over and over and always have a smile on our face. And like, there's a lot that can be done to really bring everything that business and governments have invested into spreading information to bring that into this wonderful movement in a good moral ethical way. And yet I fear that we're not going to be able to come together enough to do it. So again, I think it does come down to, yeah, it's a matter of herding cats.